The first follow-up will be from the Honourable Bratisat. Thank you, Honourable President. Honourable President, I note with great interest your, your statistic of 70 arrests for extortion. That's a bit at odds with Minister Zekalala's 200 arrests, but I'm sure the truths fall somewhere in between. Um, Mr. President, the issue of construction mafia has, and I don't know if you're aware of this, morphed far from just construction mafia, but it's morphed, in, morphed into classic mafia practice. So-called business forums, often aided and abetted by taxi association aligned security companies, arrive at businesses, not construction firms, fully armed and simply take over. They then instruct the owners of the business that they, from there on, will issue the contracts for cleaning services and for security services. And they often then also demand a Zuma approved 30% stake in the business with no intervention whatsoever. Mr. President, shortly after submitting this question via Parliament to, your, to the presidency, there was a massive flurry of activity in all the units around the country. I'd obviously been doing research with these units and they were initially one person per province, Mr. President, and now they are functional units. So whether by pressure or by, by coincidence, that is to be welcomed. The issue I want to raise with you, Mr. President, today is that we need to move this focus away from construction firms only. There are a lot of businesses in South Africa that have been captured in the way I've described. Are you prepared to establish urgently a, presidents, a presidential or presidency hotline that business captures can be reported to and receive the required SAPS intervention in order to smash these mafia cartels once and for all? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Bratisit, President. Thank you very much. Um, glad to hear that you have taken notice of the activity that is now getting underway in a much more vigorous way uh, with regard to dealing with uh, these criminals who go to building sites and try to extort money. But as you also correctly say, they have now morphed into being something else. They are now gangs that go around uh, intimidating business people, taking over building sites. We are aware of this, and that is why the TUST teams have been enhanced, and that is why we are deploying enormous resources to enable them to do their work. Now, when it comes to setting up a presidential hotline, we are improving the functionality of uh, the usual hotline that the police have so that various citizens, the citizens of our country, can have better and more effective and efficient access to their communication uh, with the police. Now, that hotline is a matter that is being discussed in the various engagements that we are having at uh, the national level uh, where businesses, business leaders, as well as government leaders get together and on a six weekly basis, they come and report to me with regard to the progress that is being made. As you may well know, we've set up a number of work streams. One of them deals with crime and corruption. And as part of that, we're looking at communications, communications that will give a sense of safety to our people that they will have a hotline that they can have access to. It's the usual police line that we've had in the past, but it's being enhanced. It's being made better. Uh, a great deal of improvement uh, is underway in that regard, and the presidency is involved in making sure that that hotline becomes more, more and more effective. Now, business people will be able to resort to that line, but we will examine precisely what you are saying to see how best uh, we can give more assistance. 
And it's not only to business people, it's also to the workers, because as these thugs get to building sites, they also attack workers, and uh, they subject workers to a great deal of pressure to do wrong things from time to time. So all these matters are now being focused on vigorously. And uh, I'm glad to hear that you've noticed that there's quite a bit of movement in this regard, and there will continue to be movement. We are going to go after those gangs. We are going to go after those people who hijack uh, either building sites and all that. And all those, whether they are taxi industry or construction industry who do wrong things, they will have to pay and be accountable for their wrong activities. That we will give an assurance to our people for. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable President. The next follow-up will be from Honorable Ms. Sheikh. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chepperson, and greetings uh, to, to the Honorable President. Mr. President, it is increasingly becoming clear that if the growing scourge of construction mafias is not addressed, the country's construction industry will be severely disrupted and the construction industry will continue to lose the skills needed to deliver vital infrastructure projects and create jobs to our people. Mr. President, what measures is the government taking to ensure that construction development involves local business and employ local residents to create community ownership so as to negate extortionists uh, as they masquerade as local business people. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sheikh, Honorable the President. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Chair. I've heard of wonderful experiences of uh, businesses in construction who as they take up a project, make sure that they interface with a great deal number of people as well as organizations in the area where the project is to be executed. This they do so that the project can be owned by the people in the locality, where they also ensure that there is economic benefit that will flow not only to a group of people, but to the people in the local area. And those businesses that have done that, they have found that there is little appetite for those who would want to come and extort money from them to hijack the, the, the project because once we have ensured that a project is executed in that way, where the community is involved in one form, shape, or other, and where the jobs that are going to be done are also given to the people in the community, that in many ways serves as a protection for the project itself because the people in the community will be so jealous of their own project that leads to development for them being taken over by people from the outside. And those business entities that take the time and the trouble to get even associations in the area involved, women's associations, youth associations, business associations, even sporting associations in the area, including taxi associations, they find that the project can progress much more efficiently without much trouble. Now, I've heard these stories from a number of uh, business people in the construction industry who, even as I ask whether their project has been taken over, they say no. And when I ask the reason, they give me that type of reason. I do believe that with any activity, economic or otherwise, it is always best to involve the community, whether it's a construction of a school, 
whether it's of a clinic or whether it's of a building. If people in the community are involved and consulted and informed what the benefits of that installation or construction will be, they will embrace it. They will see that they too are going to benefit. And people often one want to be informed, to be consulted, and they also want to see themselves being part of any development that takes place. If we don't do that, we give ground to those who may want to come and disrupt. And I would urge people in the business, in the construction industry to do that as much as they possibly can. And obviously, where th that does not succeed, the police, our task teams, as I spoke about them earlier, will always be on hand. And in fact, the starting point should also be involving the police and a whole number of other government agencies to be part of the whole process. And if many of our construction uh, projects can go that way, we will find that things work smoothly and our construction industry also works very well. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable the President, Honorable Mr. N.M. Adebe Mzungezwa. Adebe. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Chairperson. Greetings to His Excellency, the President of the Republic. Uh, Mr. President, considering that these special units consist of individuals with a specified skill set, I would like to know how the recruitment for members of these units works especially considering that the South African police services is already heavily understaffed. Thank you, Deputy Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Hadebe, Honorable the President. Thank you. Um, up to now, the people who are in this task teams have been drawn from various sections of the police service, either from the detective se section, from the <laughs> static policing section and uh, uh, from the public um, uh, protection service and all that. So they have been drawn from the various, if you like, departments of the South African police service. Now, as well as crime intelligence. So they are a multidisciplinary type of team that is involved in this task team. And you raise an important question about the fact that our police service is short-staffed. Uh, we have addressed this and I've addressed this in the State of the Nation address. And to resolve this problem, we have said that we are going to recruit more. And in the past State of the Nation addresses, I've said we're going to recruit 10,000. They were recruited and they've been trained and they've been deployed in the field. This year, I said exactly the same. They've been recruited, they are being trained, and they are going to be brought into the field so that we bring the levels of uh, our police service members to a level that compares very well with our population numbers. So the recruitment is underway, and we are going to continue bolstering the capability of these task teams. And much as I said, you know, they've been allocated money the money they've been allocated is still small. I'd like to see more money being allocated to them so that they become much more effective than they are. But believe you me, work is being done. This is an area of focus that uh, is now underway. I've discussed it extensively with the Minister of Police as well as the Commander or the, 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 the Commissioner of Police. So. There is a great deal of focus, and I do believe that we are going to uh, resolve this problem as time goes on. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable President. Finally, on the very same question, it will be Honorable Brother said again. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Chairperson. The withdrawal of the EFF today has given granted me the unique opportunity to ask you a second 
A second question, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> Mr. President. Yeah, I'm getting that. <laughs> Mr. President, um, obviously in preparation for today, I've been speaking to a number of stakeholders in this particular issue. And I once again reiterate that we must not focus only on construction site mafia, but mafia right across, as you said, gangs of thugs who just go and capture businesses. <clears throat> and you're quite correct that when construction developers start well and work with the community from the beginning, that's a, a great insurance policy to, to defeat this sort of thing. However, the following challenges have been raised with me, Mr. President, and I feel it's right that I raise them to you today and ask you for commitment to, to uh, addressing these issues. The first one is there is a monthly steering committee that meets with all the provinces around the country that includes business and uh, the SAPS, SSA and NPA. A large complaint that comes out of those steering meetings is that the SAPS presence is always lacking. So if I could just note that as the first issue. The second issue that is coming out is just a practical issue, is that we need a witness security protection program relating to this. The, the resources and the people involved in this are playing big money games. And somebody who's prepared to raise their hand and say, my business has been captured, literally should literally fear for their life. And so the next point I want to raise is a witness protection program that looks after whistleblowers, their financial security, their, ment their physical security, and their mental, their mental well-being as well. The third thing that is being raised as a practical issue, Mr. President, is a specialized prosecutorial unit that will deal with extortion. Specialized, that deals with extortion and this type of gangland, mafia-style thuggery of extortion seizing businesses, a specialized prosecutorial unit that will win. Those are the queries that I've had from the business community to you today, sir, and I ask if you could make a commitment in line with your 2020 SONA promise to engage with the ministers of police and of justice to try and get a realization on these critical issues. Thank you, sir. I'm sure Honorable Brata said you mean the state of the nation and not the state of the province. State of the nation, not state of the province. That's what I'm saying. Over to you, Honorable the President. I thought he was talking about the 2024 state of the nation address. <laughs> Thank you. As well as the 2025 State of the Nation and many others. <laughs> well, my answer is very simple and straightforward. All the matters that you have raised, I'm willing to give a commitment to to say that the police and where they've been uh, absent and not really giving their full attendance and attention, uh, that will be raised. The issue of the witness protection program uh, is under consideration and we are putting the bells and whistles of uh, how we can strengthen the witness protection program and so that whistleblowers will be able to feel free and courageous to come forward. And the prosecutorial special unit is a matter that obviously needs to be looked at. But some people have even said you need to have even special courts, but we leave that one to the side and focus on fighting this level of criminality and uh, make breakthroughs and deal with these gangs and that is something that is now underway and we're focusing more intently on it. But thank you very much for the suggestions that you've made. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable President.